So today we're looking at VSCPR. VSCPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. So you know, all the different electron pairs that are going to be in our pictures all basically are going to be dictated are going to dictate the actual shape and space that these molecules have. Um, in order for us to fill this table in, there's some terms that you kind of need to understand. And that's the difference between family or electronic structure and geometry or molecular structure. So I'm just going to insert really quick a blank page. Um, when you are determining the shape of a molecule or the family of a molecule, you need to look at the central atom. And there's some different options. I have them on the side. You have to determine, and I'm just looking at central atoms. I'm not really focused on what's attached. You have to determine how many areas of electron density are around the center atom. So these all have four areas, all of these. A bond is an area, a lone pair is an area, um, and as well as if we have this, a double bond is one area. So this is two areas, all right? This is two areas. Got it? All of these are four areas. Because these all are four areas, these are all in the same family. These all have what we call the same electronic structure. Because electronically, there's four areas around the central atom that have electrons in them. What's different about these is their geometry, or their shape and space. Their molecular structure is different. And what dictates that difference are the behavior of those lone pairs and how they repel bonded pairs. Hence, valence shell electron pair repulsion, where that comes from. So does everyone understand that? Kind of. Now, another thing that's really important, every structure where all the pairs are bonded pairs, it's going to have the same family name and geometry name. So for instance, we know that four areas is tetrahedral, because you've seen that a lot. If all four area, the areas are actually bonded areas, it's geometrically called tetrahedral as well. So for the first member of each family that's all bonded, they're going to have the same name electronically and geometrically. So we're going to start. You guys have model kits in front of you, and I'm going to be doing a lot of having you build things. We're going to look at a family of two. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, in your little kit, you have some short, fat, squatty bonds. Those are to be used for single bonds. And then you have some bendy, long bonds. What I want you to build right now is carbon dioxide, where carbon is black, oxygen is what color? Red. Oxygen's red, and I want you to attach Let's do the best resonance. What's the best resonance structure of carbon dioxide? Double, double bond. Two double bonds. This is when you use the bendy bonds. You have to use the bendy bonds for double and triple bonds. You can't use the fat, squatty ones. So if you build this, I can't pause this video, so I'm kind of, kind of, you can build while I talk, but you still need to be paying attention. But this is what it looks like. Why are you all looking at me like I'm like a foreign alien? In your bag, you've got long, bendy bonds. Those are the bonds you use in double and triple bonds. And you attach it to black. That has too many holes. I said black for a reason. We'll find one with four holes. There's got to be one with four holes in there. And you're not building link logs. You're not going to build all these random things, because then I'm going to take the model kits away from you, and you can go without. The model kits are not required. You can do this without model kits. I'm trying to help you visualize things, and I want you to stay on task. OK, so this is what family do you think? What does it look like? It's linear. OK, so two areas is linear. Um, because all the areas are bonded, its electronic structure is the same as its geometry. 
Now what we also want to look at is the bond angle. Take a look at your model. What's the bond angle between that and that? 180. All linear stuff is 180. Okay. Now, there's something else we've got to talk about. It's this molecule's polarity. This molecule is basically, and again, on that table, we're assuming everything attached to the central atom is the same. So let's pretend this is a hydrogen and this is, no, we're doing CO2, sorry. This is an oxygen and that's an oxygen. Okay. They're going to create equal and opposite dipole moments. Because that creates a symmetrical distribution of charge, we say this is nonpolar. When we start bringing lone pairs into them, it's going to mess things up, and I'll show you that when we get to the next situation. So everything on the table is under the assumption that we're attaching the same atom to the central atom. If we were to, say, make this fluorine, okay, if that were fluorine, we would have more of a dipole moment toward that fluorine. And so what the electron cloud would look like, remember the question on yesterday's quiz where it gave you the funny looking clouds? That's kind of what that answer to that problem was. You'd have an uneven distribution of charge and it would make it polar. So the second you attach more than one thing to a central atom, you make it polar. So watch out for that. They're going to try to trick you with that. You're going to be so looking at the central atom, oh, there's no lone pairs. That has to be nonpolar. Uh -uh. Something different's attached, it's immediately polar. Okay? So watch for that. All right. Let's move on to the next family. What I want you to do now, all you need to do, open up one of your double bonds like this and put something else, put another thing on, on there. If you have another red, put another red on there and make this. And this is what you get, okay? This family, both of these are in the same family of trigonal, does anybody remember? Planar, it's a plane. See how it's flat? Trigonal planar. Okay, here we have a lone pair. So starting out, if we have these three areas, the name of this geometrically is the same as the name of the family since all the areas are bonded. So this is also trigonal planar. A circle is 360 degrees around. We're cutting it in three. What is the bond angle between this and this and between that and that? 120, correct. Polar or nonpolar? Yeah, it's nonpolar. Think about a tug of war. Think about a little guy in the center being pulled three different directions, 120 degrees apart, by, by people of the exact same strength. Okay, no net force, even distribution of charge, so we say nonpolar. If the AP says, why is it nonpolar, your answer is even distribution of charge. Do not say the molecule is symmetrical. If you say the molecule is symmetrical, you will not get credit. You can say the electron cloud is symmetrical, or there's even distribution of the electrons around the central atom, but you can't say the molecule is symmetrical, because I'm about to blow that theory out the water in just a second. Okay. Now, take off one of your little single bonds. Just pop it off. All right. Now we've created a situation we have two pair that are bonded and one lone pair. Lone pairs take up a lot of space. They don't like um, being around any other electrons. So what happens, this lone pair here, you see my hand is taking up the space, it's going to repel just a little bit these bonded pairs. It's going to repel this direction. And these bonded pairs are going to come a little bit closer together so our bond angle is less than 120. You don't need to really memorize. The AP is not having you memorize a bunch of bond angles. I need you to understand, though, that it's less than what it was because of the existence of the lone pair. If you want to technically know, it's about 117. What does this look like shape-wise? Nope. Pyramid. I can't stand that up like a pyramid. It's bent, yes. 
Polar or nonpolar? It's polar this time. So I'm sorry people at home can't see this, but um, Chris and Peter stand up. I'm kind of nervous touching Peter, but all right. So I'm just going to show you kind of how this lone pair thing makes things happen. Come stand in the middle, Peter. All right. So Peter um, is going to be a central atom. Chris and I are the external side atoms. And Peter's going to be a central atom with two areas of electron density. He's going to have two bonded areas. So put your arms out like your two bonded areas. OK. Now, Chris and I, we're the same electronegativity. So just grab his wrist and just lean with me. Lean opposite me. Don't move, Peter. Relax. <laughs> All right. So notice, because we're the same electronegativity, there's no net force, right? Even distribution, good, right? What happens if Chris becomes more electronegativity negative than me all of a sudden? I'm, okay, we got we got the point. Thanks, Chris. Now we're not done yet. We're not done. Now Peter now is going to be a molecule, that central atom that has three areas. He's going to have his two bonded areas. Put your arms out, and he has a lone pair now on his back. What does the lone pair do to the bonded areas? He's going to bring his arms this way, right? Now we're going to lean, and you see how the do you see how the net pull is very different? You see the, do you see how that's creating an asymmetrical situation? All right, take a seat. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so in general, and there's two exceptions to this rule. If you have a lone pair, it is polar. However, if the AP says, why is this bent molecule polar, you better not say, because there's a lone pair. Because they will probably take away points in addition to not giving you points, because that's a really bad answer. Okay? You say there is an asymmetrical distribution of charge, or an unsymmetrical electron cloud, something like that. asymmetrical distribution of charge. You can't say the molecule is not symmetrical, because in actuality, there is a plane of symmetry here. You can't do that, all right? You have to talk about the electron arrangement around the center atom. Is everybody clear on that? It's so important. OK, let's move on to our, our next family of four. Get your carbon, and I just want you to attach four separate little hydrogens. Most of you have enough whites. Attach single bond. Go back to the short squatty bonds and attach four things to it. This is tetrahedral. Tetrahedral is the family of everything, the electronic structure of everything on this table, on this chart right here. Everything here is electronically tetrahedral because everything here has four areas. All right, tetrahedrals, don't know why, remind me of a three-legged Martian with no arms. Don't know why I think about it, but that's how I remember it in my head, OK? Does anybody remember? So we know that this is then geometrically tetrahedral, because all the pairs are bonded. Does anybody um, remember the bond angle here? It sounds like a radio station. 109.5. Why is it that crazy number? It just is. Around that 360, that's the angle that exists to get all of these in three-dimensional space as far apart as possible. OK? What's really cool, if you have balloons at home, um, all of the same size, blow them up. If you tie two together, it makes linear. If you tie three, it immediately goes to trigonal planar. If you put four together, it makes tetrahedral. It's really cool. And that's just showing you the distribution is going to be even around the center knot that you tie. OK, um, polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar, there's no lone pairs. And then, oh, we lost the Labrador. We lost the Chihuahua. And I think a Yorkie. OK. Um, let's see. Bond angle, what else? Is that all I need? I'm drawing a blank. Is that all I need for the table? OK. All right, so now we're going to have a tetrahedral molecule with three bonded areas and one 
lone pair. So cut the Martian's head off. And what's left behind? Sit it on the desk. I hear tripod. That's not what it's called. Trigonal pyramidal. It's actually in Webster's Dictionary says pyramidal, which upsets me because we don't go to the pyramids in Egypt. So I don't understand. But it's pyramidal. But I say pyramidal, so whatever. Um, trigonal pyramidal. That lone pair repels these bonded pairs downward a smidge, making this bond angle what? Less than 109.5. Who wants to guess what it actually is? Boom. Okay. Now, polar or nonpolar. We have a lone pair on Peter's back. Polar. Think of him falling and hitting his face. He was so dramatic with his fall. Okay. Next up, lose another, lose one of the Martian's feet, and we get bent. Again, tetrahedral family. Now we have two bends. One bends in the tetrahedral family, one bends the trigonal planar family. Which one is it? You're just going to have to know a lot about the molecule to know which one it is. Okay. Um, what's the bond angle here? It's even less because of more repelling forces from the lone pair, and it's technically that-ish. There's always decimals after these things. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't know because I don't want that information in my head. It's useless. Useless information. Um, polar or nonpolar? Polar. Okay. Y'all ready to move on to our family of five? All right. Our family of five, um, you're going to find your molecule. You'll either be tan. It'll be, it could be, some of the six are tan too. So you want something with five holes. Navy blue, burnt orange is an option, or tan. Tan could be six too. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Just assume they are. All right. Go ahead and build it quickly. You were using the five on the last one. Is that what I heard? So why did why did the sh did not make sense? They're not the same color. One's navy blue and one's black. All right. As you build this, I want you to take note that there is an axis and there is an equator here. I want you to always hold it up. Oh, there went a German Shepherd. I want you to hold it where the axis is running up and down. Okay? And make sure you recognize the difference between the axis and the equator. Do you see the difference? Okay. The name of this is based on the fact that if you look at this, do you see how we have two pyramids bought with bottoms touching, right? There's a pyramid and there's a pyramid. And the base of the pyramid is what shape? Triangle. So this is called, the family of all of these, electronically, of five areas, is trigonal by pyramidal because there's two of them. We have a there and then another one below. Now, holding your model, um, look at the bond angle from the axis to the equator. What is that? 90, right? In this actual structure, we have two bond angles. The other bond angle exists from the equator to another equator. So. You can turn your molecule and point the axes to your face. What's the bond angle that exists from the equator to the equator? We're back to that 120 we already had before. So there are two different bond angles there. Okay? And then polar and nonpolar. Nonpolar. Lots of lots of stuff pulling electrons toward the outside. Okay. Now, this is really important, and you have to pay attention, and you just kind of have to remember this. I'll explain why but it's something you just have to remember. When you are creating a lone pair, your lone pair is going to be created on an equator piece. And here's the reason. You don't pull off the axes. If I were to pull off this axes piece here, 
Notice my bond angles are all still 90, right? And it's actually even a little less than 90 because this lone pair is repelling that way. So all my bond angles are still 90. Bad thing? No, not necessarily, but it didn't alleviate what we call bond strain. If I take off the equator, do you see how I took everything that was 90 and now created a 180? I created a situation now where I alleviated some of the bonds from being next to each other. So in doing so, that is the more favorable way it's going to roll. So go ahead and take off one of the equator pieces and put it on your desk. You've got three seconds to have at it because I know what you all want to do, and it irritates me, so just do it. What's that called? Seesaw. Seesaw. All right. 30 seconds. That's it. Get it out of your system because I do not want to listen to this for the whole class. All right. And fin. Thank you. So this is Seesaw. The bond angle is we have this lone pair repelling everything. So both bond angles are going to be a little bit less than they were. We're back to about 117. I don't know exactly what this 90 goes to. And I really don't care because it's not important. Polar or nonpolar? It's very polar. Um, and then we're going to lose yet another off the equator. And what do we get? T-shaped. OK, take one off. We've got lone pairs there, repelling, repelling, repelling. Notice we lost our equatorial, equatorial bond angle. That 120, or less than 120, went away. So we only have the 90 left, and it's even smaller than it was before. So we're less than this, less than 90. Polar or nonpolar? Polar. All right, take off the last equator. This little central atom now is almost totally surrounded by lone pairs. Let me go ahead and put in some lone pair action here. OK. So these poor bonds on the side are like, do I repel down? Do I repel up? I don't know where to go because I'm surrounded by lone pairs. So whew, they're just out straight. And this is my one of two exceptions of polar, of polar molecules with lone pairs. So when we have this last one, which is now linear, it is considered nonpolar despite the fact we have lone pairs. Do you see how those lone pairs cause this to happen if you look at the molecule? All right? So the only way to make this molecule polar is to have different things attached to it. Okay? It is an even distribution of charge around the central atom. So what's my bond angle then? 180. So show. Okay. Are we understanding the whole polar nonpolar thing? Yes, Elsa. So like, right, but it's nonpolar because the distribution around the center is equally repelling these guys down and up. So it's going out to a point where it's a they're being pushed 180 away from each other. Mm -hmm. No, you're, that's two-dimensional space. Look at, your, look at your thing. That's why I want you to look at models. Look at where the holes are. Aren't they all around the center? I just can't draw it all around like that. I wish I could have the, on TV they have all the computer screens you can go whoom and then rotate and can't do it. Wish I could. All right. Last family. Find your piece with your six holes. Usually it's silver or... Um, are there yellows that have six? I don't know. Yellow with six. This looks like your traditional girls. Did you all play jacks? Yeah, these are jacks. This fam no spinning top. This family is called octahedral. Why is a family with six things attached called oct? Doesn't oct mean eight? Yeah, there's eight faces. If you take your hand, touch a triangular face, and turn, that's one, two, three, four faces up top, and then four faces around the other, other one. Okay, that's where the term octahedral comes from. Is there an axis and an equator on this? Well, it looks like it, right? Except when I turn it this way. Right. 
kind of. So I'm going to say no, there is no axes and equator. So we don't have to worry about where the lone pair is placed when we do our shapes. So this is called octahedral because it's all bonded pairs. There's only one bond angle in there. What is it? 90. And then what would the polarity be? Nonpolar. Good. All right, now go ahead and pop one off. Place this on your desk. What does it look like? It's a pyramid as well, but the base is square. Square pyramidal. Now, if you just use the term pyramidal, whoever's looking at it is thinking it's trigonal pyramidal. All right? If it's a square pyramidal, you have to put the word square in front of it. Plain pier the word plain pyramidal is only acceptable for the trigonal pyramidal. I say be safe and write freaking trigonal and write square every time. Okay. Bond angle, that lone pair is going to repel and make everything a little bit less than 90. Polar or nonpolar? Polar. All right. Now, in this last one, you can't just pop off any bond here. You need to remember that these electrons don't like each other. If you have a lone pair of electrons, it wants to be as far away from the other lone pair as possible. Yes? Yeah. Where would be 180? Yeah, but it doesn't matter where you take it off. You're only taking one thing off. And if you take it off anywhere, you're going to get a square pyramidal. And they ignore the 180. There's pretty much 180 in every of those molecules. They don't, they don't talk about it. They just talk about the major ones and how they change. All right, so what is this now? It's flat, so it's planar. But it's a square plane, so it's square planar. Now, we're in the same situation we were with the linear from the trigonal bipyramidal. The lone pair up top and the lone pair down below are repelling those bonded pairs oppositely. So it's pulling it back to 90 degrees, or repelling it back to 90 degrees, making this the second exception. Square planar is a molecule that's nonpolar but has lone pairs. So there's only two exceptions to that rule. However, again, I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it again. I think I might make you all do push-ups again like we did for the other. If you write, there's a lone pair, that's why it's polar. If you ever say that, I don't know, I need something worse than push-ups. Sit-ups are easy. Sit-ups? Burpees. Okay, ten burpees. Yeah, if you write that, if you write that, no, burpees are horrible. Bear complex? All right. OK. I think the burpees is a good idea. Good job. Good thinking. OK. <laughs> Guys, sh let's answer some questions. And then we're going to go back and fill in that table. So true or false, a molecule that has polar bonds will always be polar. False. Can we provide? An example of that? Oh, you didn't look at the next page, did you? CO2 is a perfect example of that. You didn't? Good. These are polar bonds, right? We have a definite dipole moment here. But the molecule itself, due to the way the polar bonds are distributed around the central atom, makes the molecule polar. Okay. I can't express how important it is to know the difference between polar bonds and polar molecules. It's a huge difference. OK. True or false? Lone pairs make a molecule polar. False. Give me some examples. Square planar. Anything that's square planar and anything that's in which family? Trigonal bipyramidal. I just write trig by peer. Don't do that on the AP, please. OK. Draw the Lewis structure. I'll draw it for you. When you're determining 
family shape, this is an S, and all that jazz, you look at the central atom and you focus around the central atom. We have one, two, three, four, five, six areas around the central atom. That tells you what family. What family is this? Octahedral. What shape is this? Square planar. And what's the polarity? Nonpolar. Because there are lone pairs there. And that's a counterexample to the whole thing that they just asked us. All right, so normally I would have students at this point write, draw these out and then give me all the information about it. I'm trusting that if you need more practice, you'll do it and then come ask me questions. Do you see how you have to know how to draw Lewis structures to do this? If you screw up your Lewis structures, everything else is going to be wrong. Let's go back and power, power fill this table in and we'll call it a day so you can go do some homework. All right, two areas electronically is linear. So that means that's also, I'm just going to do an arrow if it's the same name, linear. What are the bond angles? 180, polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. All right, now let's go to the next family of three. What's the family called? Trigonal planar. So this is trigonal planar. What are my bond angles in trigonal planar? 120, polar and nonpolar? Good. All right, trigonal planar, I pop one off. What's left? Bent. Can you all see that in your head? Kind of. The thing about this is I don't memorize, oh, with bent I have 3, 2, 1. <laughs> no. I start at the top every time. In my head I'm like, okay, 3 is that planar, so I take one off and I can see mentally that piece coming off. Don't try to memorize it. Try to think it through. If you're not a visual person, you might have to memorize it. But I really, I really hate when you guys have to like write the whole chart down so you can just go look at the chart. Think through it. Okay? You can do it. So bent is less than 120, and it's polar. All right, the next family, tetrahedral. It's a Martian. This is tetrahedral. What are the bond angles? 109.5, and it is nonpolar. Tetrahedral, little Martian loses his head, leaving behind trigonal pyramidal. Bond angles, less than 109.5, polar or nonpolar? Polar. Now the little headless Martian loses one of his feet, leaving behind. How about bent? All right, and that's less than it was before, less than less than 109.5, and that is also polar. All right, our family of five. What's it called? Trigonal by pyramidal. What are the two kinds of bond angles we have? Good. Polar and nonpolar? Nonpolar. All right, that's the, the thing with the equator and the axis, so we know we have to just take one off the equator and we get seesaw. If you're curious, the, the name, seesaw is accepted. It's in a lot of textbooks. It's fine. Use it. But it's also kind of known as an, a regular tetrahedron. And if you get a chance, you can build the, build the seesaw again and take a look at it. It looks like a drunk Martian. You'll see it. It's an irregular Martian. Um, seesaw. How many, what are the bond angles? Good. Polar or nonpolar? Polar. Okay. The seesaw then loses one of the legs, leaving T-shaped. The T-shaped is, we, lo we lost all the bond angles on the equator, leaving us with just a less than less than 90. Polar. All right. Now the T loses its T, and it makes linear. And here's our one exception to the polarity issue because it's nonpolar, and so the bond angles are 180. And if you notice, in both of those cases, the bond angles go back to a normal kind of bond angle, like either a 90 or a 180 or something like that. It's not going to be a less than anymore because, again, that distribution goes back to being totally symmetrical. Last one. 
octahedral because it has eight faces, six bonds. Bond angles, they're all 90, and it's polar and nonpolar. Nonpolar. All right, we'll do hybridization tomorrow, by the way. Um, we're going to lose one of those, and we're going to make a square pyramid, square pyramidal, less than 90 polar. On the opposite side to where the lone pair is, the next one's lost, and that gives us square planar, bringing all our bond angles back to 90, and again, as our second exception to things with, things with lone pairs being polar. Do you have to know this whole table? Yeah, you do. Okay. It's not that bad. Those of you who took regular chem, you guys learned up through tetrahedral, so you're adding two things onto it. But it's very doable. Unfortunately, I can't let you use the models because you're not going to be able to use the models on the AP. When you get to organic, I let you use the models because there's no AP exam. Ha ha. All right, that's it. We're done.